Hi, this is Michael Kennedy from Developmentor, and I'm going to show you how to install MongoDB on OS X. So you'll see it's just a couple of steps. We're just going to download the proper version of MongoDB from mongodb.org. We're going to decompress it, create some folders that it needs to store its database and its log files, and we're going to start it up with a set of command line options to get it going. And if you'd like, we'll also see how you can install it as a system daemon as well. So let's start by opening up a new tab and going to mongodb.org. All right, here we are at mongodb.org. Go to the downloads. Now, uh, they used to have a 32 and 64-bit version for OS X, but um, the 32-bit version of MongoDB is not really recommended. It doesn't uh, hold more, more data than ten, uh, 2 gigabytes for a database. So, um, you know, they basically took that one away. It's still available for Windows and Linux, but it's also not particularly recommended, hence this little note. So we're going to download the stable version. We could get the nightly build or older versions, but let's just get the most recent version. So that'll download in a second. Okay, excellent. Now we have MongoDB downloaded. Here you can see, uh, if we go to our downloads folder, see here's the TGZ file. We can just decompress that. And let's see what we got. So in here we have a bin folder, and in the bin folder is actually the, uh, the application files we're interested in. Let's rename this just to MongoDB, because if we have the version number in there and it changes, we have to change our paths and all that sort of stuff. So the next thing that we can do is uh, go and open a terminal window. And let's just go to the folder where this decompressed. OK, here we are in the MongoDB directory where we uh, decompress everything. We can change directory into the bin folder. And here you see uh, the two files that we're most interested in are Mongo, which is the shell, and MongoD, which is the server. So if we try to run MongoDB, you'll see that it actually says it tries to start correctly, but then it says it couldn't. And the reason it couldn't is this right here. The slash data slash db directory doesn't exist. Now, we don't have to use slash data slash db. We can put it wherever we like on our server. But let's go ahead and just uh, create that directory just to, make, uh, just to follow the, the basics here. So we need to create this and because it's on the root we're going to need to use our permission so let's say sudo make directory slash data and it needs my password and then let's say slash db okay great and then we also need to make the data directory writable so we'll say sudo change mod 777 whoops if I could spell that slash data slash db okay now MongoDB should have permissions to write there. Let's go ahead and try to run it again. All right, now Firewall is asking, do we want to let it allow uh, inbound connections or not? Well, we'll go ahead and let it uh, take inbound connections. And you can see it's up and running. If we go and create a new terminal window, we can type Mongo, which I added to my path earlier, uh, for the shell. And you can see that we're connected to it. We can say show DBs. There's a local database, we can create data, all that. And here you can see uh, it accepted a connection. So these two guys are talking to each other. Got it up and running, that's great. Now, uh, typically when you're running MongoDB, you wanna give it uh, more options than just the defaults when we started it. You might wanna give it a log file, you might wanna enable rest. So we could do things like this, like slash, um, let's see, db path for the directory, so we'd say slash data slash tv, just keep using what we had. We might say um, directory per db to create a separate subdirectory for each uh, database we create. We might say dash dash rest to enable rest. We might say dash dash log um, path and give it a, you know, something like um, where we want to put the logs, right? That sort of thing. So we'd give it a path there, but there's a simpler way than typing that in every time. We can create a config file. So here's a config file I created. And it says, here's the database path. Here's the uh, uh, use this directory per, D, per DB. And we could also turn on the logging, but I commented them out just so you can see the output. We can also say only accept inbound connections. OK, so if we wanted, we could save this. 
the correct location. You go to downloads, put it in there into the bin folder. So now if we want to run this again, we could say mongod, whoops, dot slash mongod, mongo d.conf. Yeah. And it starts, um, whoops, I need to say dash dash config like that. So now it starts using this config. You can see here it's binding the local IP address is true. It's using this config file, using all these settings that we gave it. So that makes it a lot simpler if we just create this file and just always uh, reference that. So now we've got MongoDB up and running. Everything's working. The last step that you might do, you may or may not do, is set this up as a daemon. So there's two steps to doing that. One, the first thing is to create this plist file. And the plist file looks like uh, this. We're going to give it the org.mongodb.mongod uh, name. Tell it wherever you installed it. The last time I installed it, it happened to be there. And so that's where it is. I'm telling you to use the config file, which came along with it. That's the one I just showed you. And also set up some logging folders for it as well for errors and just general start and stop messages. The next thing that we have to do with this is save it into a particular location. So we have to save this over into library, launch daemons. Here's our org.mongodb.mongod plist. So now it's all set up. The last thing we have to do is launch it. And you launch it using this command right here. Raise your permissions, launch control, load this plist. All right, so that'll set it up as a daemon and it'll auto start uh, with the system if you like that. All right, so that's all there was to it. Came over here, we downloaded it, decompressed it, uh, created the log and data folders. Although you didn't see me create the log folders, they're already here. You can imagine it's just the same as the data folders. Uh, we ran it, set up the configuration parameters we went and passed in, and we talked about installing it as a system daemon. Finally, uh, we're, this content is part of a MongoDB course on LearningLine at learninglineapp.com. So if you'd like to learn more MongoDB content, come and check it out there. And here's my information. Thanks for watching.